Hi everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Half Century Concealment. So today, we're going to talk about the Taurus G2C. Uh, we found the Taurus G2C on Palmetto State Armory, and I want to stress, we're not sponsored by Taurus, and we're not sponsored by Palmetto State Armory. Um, they, they didn't give me this for free. We paid for this with our own money. Uh, but we saw a promotion that they had. Figured a lot of people saw the promotion. Uh, firearms on sale right now for $180. We were actually able to purchase it with a $25 mail-in rebate. It came out to $155 for us. That rebate is since over. Uh, but it is still available for $180 on Palmetto State Armory and quite a few other places. I'm pretty certain if you go onto Gun Broker uh, or, or other websites, you'll be able to find them brand new for that price. Now, with that said, is it a waste of $180? That's, that's the question. We always look at everything from the point of view because there's been a lot of reviews done on this firearm. Uh, but we always look at things from the point of view of the average American consumer, all right? You are either looking for your first pistol, you are on a strict budget, uh, which a lot of us are, uh, or you are just basically looking for another firearm to own and want to find out, am I throwing away almost $200 by purchasing this? Because I, I know already there's a whole bunch of you out there that you heard me say the word Taurus and right from the beginning you went, oh God. Less. But you know what? Let's 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 dive in and let's not prejudge. All right. So this is how our Taurus came to us. This is how we received our Taurus G2C from our FFL. Nice little box, Palmetto State Armory sticker. Starting to collect those. There's a lock I'll never do anything with, and brochures I'll never read. <laughs> so let's get to our pistol. We have it in a nice little plastic bag with the Taurus name on it. All right, first, looks good, clean, uh, not all oily. It's got some nice texturing on the grip. It's got a thumb rest, thumb rest for, for the other hand. Mags, good quality metal mags, yellow feeder. Two of them, thank goodness, it makes the first trip to the range so much better when there's two magazines. Uh, so annoying to have to keep refilling one. All right, let's get this barrel plug out of here. That was a little annoying as well. We've got a thumb safety. We'll talk more about that during the video. Uh, slide release, mag release. All right, so mag release is a little tight at first, but I mean, it's a brand new gun. This hasn't even been broken in. So that's, that's to be expected. There's a shot of the underside of the top of the slide. It racks back well. Uh, trigger pull is good. Let's find that reset. All right, reset is good. I'm quite pleased with the initial impression so far. Three dot sights. They're a little off-white, they're not white-white, but that's our Taurus G2C. Now the Taurus, as you saw in the video, came with two magazines and two good quality magazines. Um, they're metal mags, they've got a yellow feeder, um, bright yellow feeder. It's got the, the finger rest for the third finger for your pinky. And good quality mags, it comes with two of these, uh, nice little box, and a bunch of pamphlets we'll never read. Uh, but they were pretty. So. Let's talk a little bit about our initial impression right out the box, right out the gate. Well, the firearm feels good in the hand. I mean, that's, that's usually, I know that sounds silly, but that's something that I, that I look at uh, because I know a lot of people do. A lot of people walk around gun shows and they just grab pistols and they, and they want to see, well, this one doesn't feel good in my hand, this one does. And, and that's how where they initially start, that, like that's criteria number one. So let, let's talk about that because it has a pretty good grip. It, it's got a grip that, that has texture pretty much all around where it needs to. Uh, pretty aggressive texture, actually. Uh, my wife thought it was a little too aggressive, but, but I like it. Um, fits my, my, my hand quite well. Has thumb rests on both sides. Uh, has a mag release. Uh, by the way, yes, drops free every time. Uh, has a mag release that can be switched over to the other side. Uh, does come with a thumb safety. We'll talk a, more, a little bit more about that in a moment. 
And um, you know what? In initial impressions are that that the quality is good. It's it's polymer with with steel. Um, we'll we'll get more into the specs in a few moments. The sights are a little bit dim. Uh, I will say that they're they're not really white. They're more like an off white. Uh, that's that's just kind of my initial impression on the sights, and they are plastic, but they are also adjustable. So I'll I'll, I'll put that out there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Taurus. Who who is Taurus? And and look, I, I I get a little geeky, a little in the weeds on on some of this uh, info on the company, but it's important to me at least. Um, and if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm a financial advisor uh, here in the South Florida area. So knowing the company is important to me. Now, Fort Taurus has 240 million dollars in annual sales. They're one of the largest small arms manufacturers in the world. Um, they made their first revolver nearly 80 years ago in 1941. Fast forward to 1970. Beretta came into Brazil and they won a government contract to supply small firearms um, to the Brazilian government. The requirement was that they had to open a factory in Brazil and employ Brazilian employees, which they did. Ten years later, they lost the contract. So now they've got this factory, which they sold to Taurus. Um, the factory didn't just come with the building. The factory came with uh, uh, tooling, with machinery, with employees, uh, with knowledge. And this knowledge was transferred to, to Taurus uh, at that time. In 1982, they opened up Taurus USA right here in Miami. Awesome. Uh, great for the, for the economy down here. And they do quite a bit of manufacturing down here. This actually is stamped Miami, Florida um, on the firearm. So quite pleased at that. Um, Unfortunately, and I remember friends of mine back in the year, in the mid 80s, uh, late 80s, that were buying Taurus 38 snub nose revolvers. And I remember that th they were never really that thrilled with the quality. They bought them because back then we didn't have a lot of money and they were cheap. So you wanted a, you wanted a, a, a firearm. Uh, 38 snub nose was a pretty okay way to go back in the early, in the late 80s. So, but they, they didn't keep them very long. Eventually, they ended up trading them up for something else. It just kind of became a, a stepping stone into the, into the firearms, uh, into owning a firearm. Uh, so they really fell out of touch with U.S. buyers. They had quality control issues. And unfortunately, it affects your reputation. Your reputation goes, I mean, you've got nothing left. So fast forward now to 2015 and Compañía Brasileira de Cartuchos, uh, cartridges basically, um, they went ahead and bought Fort Haas Taurus. Um, they're, by the way, the owners of Magtech, of Cellular, Cellular and Bellet uh, ammunition. Uh, so th th they, they've been in the game for quite a while. Uh, they put an American in charge. So there's an American CEO president in the company right now. His name is Anthony Acetelli, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he's a former senior vice president at Colt. So he also comes with, with knowledge of the industry. They didn't just bring him in from somewhere else. Um, they hired engineers. They're focusing on quality control. They're focusing on putting out a product that is going to be attractive to the U.S. consumer uh, in this day and age into, into what we want now, uh, not what we wanted 30 years ago. Um, they fo like I said, they're focusing on quality control and really improving their dealer relations to better their reputation. Are they there five years later? No, I don't think they are because if not, a whole bunch of you wouldn't have been cringing when I said Taurus. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think they're making strides in the right direction and this very well could possibly be a step in that right direction. So let's, let's do our, an initial review of, of this Taurus G2C. Um, it's available in nine millimeter, which this one is, and 40 cal. The nine mil, this one is a 12 plus one. That's, that's really attractive. When you can get 12 plus one in a small package like this, um, I really like that. Um, I, I haven't put this in a, in, a, in a holster yet, an inside the waistband holster, to see how much it's going to print. But I've got to say, I, I don't think it would be any different than the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield that I'm currently using as my everyday carry. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned the 40 cal is a 10 plus one, uh, which is still really good for a 40 cal. Um, it is a polymer frame. It is a steel uh, slide. 
Um, it's carbon or stainless, depending on whether you want the black finish or the, um, or the brush stainless finish. And it is available in a myriad of colors, by the way. Um, there's a, a green, there's an FDE, there's even a purple, which could make a really cool Joker looking package if you want to spend money on that. Uh, the dots, as I said earlier, are three dot plastic sites. Uh, I'll see if I can hold them up. Uh, that's probably about as good as that's going to get on a dark background, but you can see them. They're just, they're not spectacular here. That might, that's a little better actually. Um, they're just, they're not wow. Great, but they're okay. Plastic three dot sights. Um, it is striker fire and it has restrike capabilities. Um, by the way, before anybody wigs out, yes, the mag is empty. Yes. The firearm has been cleared. No, there is nothing in the uh, barrel so we can freely do this but that's basically what restrike capability means you don't have to re-rack the slide in order to get another uh, dry fire or shot out now um, size dimensions what's a, let's use a point of comparison which is the Glock 26 probably one of the most popular uh, small double stacks out there uh, the Glock 26 is 6.42 inches in length this one's 6.26 so it's 0.16 inches shorter, and that's because the barrel is 0.15 inches shorter. Um, this is a 3.25 inch barrel, whereas the Glock 26 is a 3.4 inch barrel. So hence you have a firearm that's just going to be a little bit shorter, but less than a quarter of an inch. Height, that's where the big difference comes in because the Glock 26 is a two finger grip. So if you get the mag extension on the Glock 26, I'm pretty certain it'll be close to this. This is five inches of height. The Glock 26 is 4.17 with a two finger grip. So like I said, if you go with the three finger grip with the mag extension, I'm pretty certain you're gonna be pretty, fairly close to these five inches. Um, the width, almost identical, 1.25 for the G20, G26 and 1.26 for the G26. Um, and by the way, when you have these written on paper, G2C and G26 look really similar, except for the little part on the six. Just thought I'd put that out there. Um, maybe it's a mental game. But the, the width, like I said, is almost identical. Weight-wise, uh, let me show, we went ahead and put this on the scale. Let me show you what the results of that was. So let's see what our Taurus G2C weighs in at. We have the magazine, it is unloaded. Let's zero out the scale. And we are at 21.62 ounces unloaded. And just out of curiosity, 18.9 ounces without the magazine. So right about just under 19 ounces without the magazine, 21 and a half ounces, roughly speaking, unloaded. So as you saw, it weighs about 19 ounces, just under 19 ounces without the mag, um, and fairly equal to, to the Glock 26 in, in weight. Fairly equal at the end of the day, dimension-wise, to, to a Glock 26. Uh, big difference, obviously, is price, and we're not doing a price comparison or an actual product comparison. Just wanted to do a, a size comparison. Another feature that impressed us a bit on the G2C is that it comes with a rail. Yeah, let me kind of put it up there. There you go. Uh, angle shot here into the light background. There you go. So it brings a rail. And that was one of the things that, that did surprise us a little bit because this is, at the end of the day, a sub $200, uh, nine millimeter, 12 plus one. So on top of that, it brought a rail. Now, I don't think it's very expensive in the manufacturing process to whether you make a, 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 a lower with a rail or not because at the end of the day, you're making a mold, you're injecting that mold, and whether that mold has a little rail or not, it's actually, technically speaking, a little bit less material that you are using. Um, so maybe it's an actual tiny little cost savings for your manufacturing process at the end of the year after manufacturing thousands and thousands of these. But at the end of the day, look, it, it's, it's an attention to detail that they put a rail on this. Now, Whatever you put on the rail, maybe you put a red dot if that's or green dot if that's what you're into. Uh, I'm a fan of having a light on my everyday carry. Now, why do I want a light on my everyday carry on such a small pistol? Well, because maybe I'm finding myself in a dimly lit situation. Maybe I find myself in a lights and a power out situation or just basically in an evening situation where I, I don't have enough light and, and I need to rely on this to be able to defend my life or the life of those whom I love. 
So this is the smallest light that we have currently, by the way, and, and it's not small enough. Uh, it's the Olight PL Mini. Uh, so the Mini's not mini enough. Oh, well, drop test. Uh, but <laughs> we uh, tried putting it on here. It's, we're off by about three eighths of an inch. It basically butts up against uh, the guard here and up against the trigger guard. But we're probably gonna get a PL Mini 2, which is minier than the Mini. And it, what it has, it has the ability to slide this piece back. So by sliding this piece back, we should be able to fit it into the rail properly. And then let's see what that feels like with a, with a light on it. Now, the only other concern that I would have with that is that this isn't a Glock 26 where every manufacturer who makes holsters makes a holster for a Glock 26. There's not a lot of manufacturers out there making holsters for, for a Taurus G2C. We're gonna get one and we'll, we'll try to find the best one out there. Uh, but I'm kind of thinking that on top of that, to find a manufacturer to make a holster for a Taurus G2C with a light on it might not be an option. So we'll, we'll have to see because then it has to be a light specific uh, holster um, mold for that. So let's, let's see if that's, even, if that's even a possibility. So the next question is, all right, feels okay. Sights are fine. Um, it's got the thumb rest. So how does it shoot? So let me, we took it out to the range. We went out to Top Gun range. Shout out to them, by the way. They've got a brand new range here in Miami, Florida, which is beautiful. Um, they, they do some really cool stuff uh, throughout the week. Uh, some really nice events that they put together. If you haven't checked them out and you're down here in the South Florida area, highly recommend you check out Top Gun indoor range. By the way, we were consistently using 115 grain uh, Winchester ammo uh, for this time around, just basically nine millimeter range ammo. It shot quite well. Uh, this is, I'm not sure if it, we're putting it on this side or on this side, but on one of these sides of me uh, is a picture of the uh, best uh, clip and a half or so that, that we shot. Um, I've got to say, it shot quite well. Uh, we, were, we were fairly accurate with it, uh, especially for being the first time out. And whenever you're the first time out with a firearm, uh, it's still not an extension of your hand yet. So we're, we're still getting used to the trigger, getting used to the feel of it, getting used to the, the kick of it and everything else. But I've got to say, just right out the, the box, qu shot quite well. So now we're going to do the trigger pull test on our G2C. So... <clears throat> putting my finger here just to guide it, just to make certain that it doesn't slip off. And we were right about 6.4 pounds. Let's try that again. We'll do it a few times, maybe a few different parts of the trigger to see how the numbers line up. We went a little bit lower this time. We got six pounds on the trigger pull. Let's go ahead and reset. Right at six on the dot again. And let's do one more for good luck. And right at six again. So fairly consistent at six pounds. Pretty certain that we'll, we'll get better and more proficient as, as we go through this process. Um, and by the way, this process is going to lead us to a 1,000 round review in a few months that we'll be putting, uh, doing a video and doing a full review on this pistol. Um, not just 
from an initial review perspective, but from a holster perspective, from a printing perspective, uh, we're gonna look at everything that our entire experience over a thousand rounds with this. Now, we're not trying to torture test it either. And, I, and I'll talk a little bit about that. There are channels out there that do torture tests and I'm glad that they are and that they do. That's not us. We're not here to do a torture test because honestly, we don't. you're not gonna torture your firearm. Um, for the most part, you're gonna spend a couple of hundred or whatever it is you spend on, on your firearm and you're gonna take care of it. You're gonna take care of your things because you want this to be there for you when you need it. All right, so you're gonna clean it, you're gonna, you're gonna take care of it, you're not gonna bang it up, you're gonna keep it in a cushy case. Um, you're, you're gonna take care of your pistol. Um, you, you take care of your pistol, your pistol will take care of you. Oh, that sounded nice. Uh, but that's what you would expect. So yes, is this, are the sights plastic and can they probably break off? Yeah, they probably could. Uh, but if you take care of your things, they will take care of you when you need them. Let's talk a little bit about that reliability. Well, initially we've put about 150 rounds through through the pistol and I've got to say we didn't have one jam, we didn't have one problem. Like I said, we're using Winchester 115 grain 9 millimeter standard uh, range ammo and and it went quite well for us. Um, we like I said, not one jam, not uh, not one issue so far. Now, are we gonna have an issue by the time we go through a thousand rounds? Maybe, maybe it'll be the ammo's fault, maybe it'll be the gun's fault, we'll figure that out. We'll let you know as, as we progress. Um, but that's reliability so far, is, we're good with it. Uh, value, yeah, value is definitely there. I, I think it's a good quality pistol. I think it's a pistol that is going to help Taurus with their reputation. And I, is it worth $180? Yeah, actually, I think it's probably worth a little bit more. I'd probably say it's worth a good $250, $300, especially because it's a 12 plus one capability. My shield is an eight plus one capability. And this is about the same size, probably maybe a little bit thicker, but not as thick as some other ones. And like I said, still have to put it in a holster and see how it prints, but I, I think I think the value is definitely there. Now, is this a competition gun? No, it's not. It's for self-defense, okay? And it's gonna be your primary concealed carry. Maybe it's your secondary uh, truck or gun car. Uh, sorry, tr uh, truck or car gun. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is this is definitely not for competition. This is for up close and dirty, and, and you've got a problem that needs to be resolved. So, Along those lines, let's talk a little bit about this thumb safety. This thumb safety, and I'll kind of, oh wait, there it is, uh, comes down real easy, not an issue. This is my personal opinion, and this is, this is my personal opinion, I wanna stress that. I don't like thumb safeties. It's one more thing that when you're on the defensive, when somebody has planned what they're going to do to you and you're not aware of that and you are now in reaction mode, it's one more thing that I've got to remember to do. So if I've got my thumb safety up and I don't remember that and I go to use this pistol to defend my life or those that, whom I love, then I, I, that's gonna create a bigger problem for me now because now all I have is just a, a, a paperweight on my hand. I'm gonna have to remember uh, in a moment of stress when my heart rate is through the roof that, oh wait, you didn't take off the safety. So personally, I'd rather not have a safety at all. That's just me. I'm not telling you to not use your safety. If you like having your safety, please use your safety, absolutely. I'm just telling you this is my personal opinion, sample of one, opinion of one person. Uh, take that for what you wish. But that's just me, I'm just not a fan of, of having a thumb safety. One less, the less I have to deal with in a moment of stress, the better it is. Uh, there is already a safety inside the trigger. So if I don't depress that safety, it's not going to fire, it's not even gonna dry fire. Um, I've gotta depress that safety in the center of the trigger. So that's another reason why I'm not a fan of the thumb safety, just thought I'd put it out there. Now, warranty, comes with a limited lifetime warranty, all right? What does that mean exactly? Whenever I see the word limited, it just, okay, let's read further. Uh, it basically means this. It's a lifetime warranty for me because I'm the one who bought it. If I transfer this to somebody else, the warranty goes away. Simple as that. It is a limited lifetime warranty for the original owner of the pistol. Now, there's also another caveat. You've gotta go on their website and register it within the first 30 days. 
I didn't find out about this until after 30 days had passed. Bought this before the holidays. Holidays came around. We had some uh, some trips that we were on. And by the time I got around to, to uh, looking into the warranty on it um, and, and finding out what I needed to do uh, or if I needed to do anything, uh, then it turns out that, yes, you have to go onto their website and you have to register it within 30 days. I didn't do that. I'm going to do that and I'm still going to see if they decide to honor it or not and I'll report back and let you know what the result was. Uh, but it is a limited lifetime warranty for the original owner only. Otherwise, I believe there's a one year warranty then that one does transfer, does stay with the firearm for the first 12 months from the date of original purchase. So I've got 11, 10 and a half months left on that one. So final conclusion is on a scale from A, B, C, D, E, and F, or D and F, um, I would give this a solid B. Uh, hey, look, I passed a lot of tests with a solid B in school. That's not bad, um, but it's a solid B. Uh, that's that's what I'll call it. Uh, is it an A? No, it isn't an A. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd call this a solid B. Would I carry this on me? I'll let you know after a thousand rounds. Uh, that, that's my thing. I, I don't just buy something and stick it in my waist and, de and have my life depend on something uh, unless I'm certain. Now, that's me. So there are other reviews out there. If you are considering this for a concealed carry, uh, which is exactly what this is for, I'd recommend you take a look at other videos. Take a look at other reviews and see what other people's opinions are of the firearm. But from a value perspective, from the, a quality perspective, uh, of, from my initial impression, um, yeah, I give this a solid B. I definitely think that it is something that has the potential to become an everyday carry. And as I said before, my shield is an A plus one. So I've got four reasons to consider this, four more rounds, to consider this as my concealed carry option, all right? Um, probably would, would suck because I just bought this really great holster uh, from Tier 1 Concealment that we're going to do a review on that carries an extra mag uh, for my shield, but that's okay. We're going to do a review of the Tier 1 Concealed. Uh, this is their uh, Elite Slim, if I'm not mistaken, um, so we've got an upcoming video on that. And if you've noticed this, by the way, sitting back here, a uh, little bit of a teaser that I'll give you. This is our Glock 17 build. Uh, we're really, really proud of the, the work and effort that went into selecting the components that, that, that are in here. And we're gonna actually do, we can't just do one video because it'll be too long, but we're gonna do a series of videos on this pistol and, and all the components that are on it and what really we love about it and if there's anything that we don't. Um, this, this was a little bit of a labor of love and it was also a lot of research that went into, into selecting these components. Uh, we've got, I mean, we'll, we'll get into specifics, but there, there's some really great people that, that nobody donated a part for this, by the way, with everything we bought with our own money, uh, but that by their manufacturing contributed to this pistol. So look forward to, to doing some reviews on this and sharing that information with you. Hope you enjoyed the information. Please like and subscribe below and comment. Let us know if you have had experiences with the Taurus G2C. Um, do you own one yourself? What's your feedback been? Um, do you have questions for us that you want us to, to address on the next video that we do on our thousand round review? So really look forward to our next conversation. Hope you enjoyed, once again, the information shared with you today. We always ask, if you're going to bring a pet into your home, please adopt. It's the right thing to do and help support your local animal shelters. Have a wonderful day.